Hello YouTube! Welcome back to a new project. Halloween's a coming. I gotta get busy. I need me a monster magnet board. So I've got all my little magnets I made up for this year for the trick-or-treaters. Um, I'm gonna give them candy and let them pick out an individual magnet for themselves. Uh, but I need something to stick them to. So I want to make this guy a magnet board. I got it off of uh, Facebook Marketplace for I think it was like 15 bucks. I met some nice lady at a gas station. So thank you nice lady for the old uh, mirror. I think it's off an old bedroom set or something like that. Uh, you guys can easily do this project with an old window frame, uh, an old headboard, an old picture frame. Uh, the, the first shops always have big old honking mirrors like this, which is pretty cool. Uh, when I saw this one on uh, Marketplace, I was like, yeah, that's the one I want to use. So my plan is I'm going to knock the board out of it, uh, strip it clean. I want to shorten it a little bit so I'll end up using a little miter saw uh, and cut some angles and then move that piece right back up so we can shorten it up some so it's not so big. Then we'll deck it out. I think I'm going to put a big skull right here, maybe some studs or some spikes and stuff, sand it down. I want to stand at that same blood red color as the bottom half of my shop. So uh, this is what we started with. Big old mirror. There's some kind of particle board. Look, it's got some tacks in there. So let's go ahead and start deconstructing this thing. A good old ball peen hammer. Oh. Well, that's crap. Oh. All right. All right, we're halfway there. Pretty cool. We got some little uh, brackets or braces or something in here. Pretty easy. All right. Again, just a little crap, so we got a nice frame. I think what I want to do is measure down a little bit, or I'll probably measure up from the bottom. I'll mark it maybe halfway, maybe about half this size. Actually, more to put all my magnets on there and write something. Uh, let's see. Let's go up about 19 inches. All right. So, go there. Do 19. I'm gonna do the other on the other side, and then I'm gonna slap this guy in the uh, my little miter box. I'm gonna cut a 45 at the bottom. That way, I have a nice even angle on both sides. And when I come back, I'll have the bottom piece ready to uh, be reconnected to the top piece, and I'll clean all these little screws and brads and stuff out in the meantime. So when we come back, we're gonna have this bottom piece ready to get screwed onto the top piece. Okay, YouTube. So we're back. I went ahead and cut the excess off. We don't need those anymore, and all I use is a simple miter box and saw. I think you get the set at Menards or most uh, Home Depots and stuff for about 10 bucks. Nothing fancy, no compound miter saws, no power tools, just simple hand tools. We cut this frame down where I wanted it. I marked it on the back, use this piece to mark my, uh, my angles. I went ahead and got it glued. I put some screw holes in the bottom. Uh, the glue will hold this thing together stronger than the screws were, but I'm just gonna throw the screws in for it anyways. Uh, but we're a lot shorter now, so I think that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. I think we'll go ahead and put our screws in. I went ahead and I pre-drilled an eighth inch hole all the way through. And then I countersinked a little bit so that our screw heads won't be seen from the underside. So even if I put this a lot higher up in the air, you won't see the screws on the underside. And they're black anyway, so these are just cheapo drywall screws I'm going to run in here. stuff and number two all right we're done got our screws in there that's gonna hold us I might even go ahead and put put a couple of screws in here because it looks like this is starting to pull away like I said this whole wood is this whole wood frame is, or this whole frame is wooden so it must be from the 70s or early 80s uh, even if you found a, a frame that was plastic at like a thrift shop or something like that you can still easily cut through it with a miter saw or a hacksaw, so don't let that discourage you from finding a thrift frame and making your own monster magnet board or bulletin board or cork board, whatever you want to do. we got plenty of room left on the back side, so I think the next thing we should do is probably let this sit up for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take some 80 grit. I'm going to sand this whole thing down, scuff it up. I might run the torch over it to stress it, and then uh, I'll probably take you guys to work with me in the morning, and we'll cut a piece of sheet metal for the back to fill this in. We'll use this as our template. We'll lay down some sheet metal, I'll cut that, I'll have to sandblast it and put some uh, chassis paint on it, and we'll have us an actual magnet board, and then we'll deck this thing out with all kinds of cool stuff. Maybe put a big old Nightmare Maker skull right here on top, leering down at the kids, because I want them to walk up and get their magnets from this board, so it'll be lit by black light too, so. I'm going to go ahead and sand this thing down, and the next time you guys see me, uh, we'll be at the shop cutting some sheet metal for this thing, making a template. 
Okay, YouTube's, we're at my restoration shop. I went ahead and beat the hell out of the frame. I ran a uh, torch over it so I can blister the old uh, shellac or finish, whatever was on this thing, because it's pretty old. Uh, I just went ahead and beat it, sanded it down with 80 grit, put some uh, grooves and stuff in it with files, so I'm pretty happy with it. I went ahead and traced out the back, so I made a little template out of paper, so we're good to go. This way I know how much sheet metal we're gonna, uh, how big our sheet metal piece is gonna have. So I just got me a little template all traced out. I went ahead and marked on my sheet metal. This is uh, 18 gauge sheet metal, it's pretty strong stuff. When we're done, I'm gonna sandblast the surface and I'm gonna chassis paint it. Uh, this little magnets will stick to it and the board will be black and it won't rust. Uh, if you guys are gonna attempt this at home, you could always buy a piece of like pre-cut sheet metal from Menards or if you had an ornate frame, you could take it into a metal shop and have them cut a piece and drop it in there for you. How am I gonna cut this itself? I'm going to use air shears. Uh, this is what I use most of my sheet metal with when I'm cutting anything. You don't want to try and attempt this with a pair of snips. It'll curl up all around and make the edges all uh, wonky. It'll never fit in your frame. So you don't want to go that route. Uh, I use the air shears like I said. They're expensive but man they're worth it. When I do floors and I'm cutting out quarter panels and stuff for cars and I'm making stuff here at the shop, uh, I can't live without them. So that's how I'm going to cut the sheet metal. I'm going to cut this out then we're going to drop it in the frame and see what it looks like. So show you guys a little bit, we'll get this cut going, frame over here, we don't care if it lands on the floor, we like the distress look here. So here's my shears, anytime you're working with sheet metal you want to have gloves on. Alright, let's go. Alright folks, I got the sheet metal all cut out. I went ahead and ran a grinder over my sharp edges, dropped it in the frame, it fits great. I'll show you what we got. So we got our sheet metal in there. Magnet stick, so that's pretty cool. Um, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to sandblast this whole plate and I'm going to use chassis paint on it. Uh, could you use magnet paint? I don't know. I've got steel. I'm going to do it the old school way since I'm a steel worker. I don't know if that stuff works or not or how good it works, but I know this is steel so my magnets are going to stick. So I'm gonna get it set up for sandblasting and once it's done, I'm gonna shoot a coat of a chassis saver on there. This stuff turns to ceramic. It keeps your metal from rusting. I use it on all my restorations and stuff like that. It sticks really good once the surface is sandblasted. So I'm gonna buzz this whole surface down and take this blue, ink, this blue coating off. And I'm gonna put a coat of this on there and we'll call our uh, backboard done. All right, YouTubes, let's get our blast on. Okay, YouTubes, chassis paint, one coat. Alright YouTubes, we're done. We'll go back to my shop and we'll start working on that frame. Okay YouTube, so I was digging around in my little uh, junk drawers and scrap bins. Uh, I got a couple of these little uh, spikes I poured up. I don't have enough. I think I want to do four spikes on the uh, frame. Or six I think, maybe six. Do one, two, three, and do all four sides. Uh, so I went ahead since I only had four and I poured up some resin ones. I just dusted the, gold, the mold in gold. Put a little bit of uh, copper uh, mica powder in there. So we'll have six spikes to fill in all the corners basically of the mirror or magnet board. So I got those guys done and then I went ahead and I thought, man, I'm going to put a big skull right in the center. I don't want to do a bunch of skulls, just one because I want to keep that arch line. I just love that silhouette of this thing. So I went ahead and made up a Nightmare Maker skull. Uh, this one's a number four skull. And I don't know if I want to use the whole mouth or not. We'll see. I just, again, man, Nightmare Maker is awesome stuff. You guys got to go get you some, man. Okay. All right. Pop them out. 
All right. So that is our skull. We can still kind of hear it. All right. So I gotta get this guy shaved down, get him fit to go on there. I gotta get these little spikes shaved down, clean these up a little bit. And I think what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of these little half domes. And I'll probably use a pair for eyes and maybe even put some little half domes down the edge of this thing. I'll use the smaller size. So the mirror looks like chunkier and heavy. So maybe something like this and I'll glue these on before we stain. Uh, so that way everything will be the dark red colors. We're gonna stain right over the skulls like you did my, uh, my cabinet doors. I'm gonna put go straight stain with the same kind and I'm gonna have that finish on the top of the mirror. So I'm gonna cut the skull down. Oop, here you come back. All right, so I'm gonna cut this skull down. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and glue some, uh, some little half round domes off Amazon. I'll glue these around the frame. I wanna shave these guys down and I'm gonna glue everything in place except for these guys. I'll put these guys on last after the stain. Um, and I may even pre-stain this guy, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shave this guy down to fit and then I'm gonna put uh, the spikes get the spikes ready to go, and then I might do the half domes and put those on and get this thing basically ready to stain. So when we come back, hopefully we can throw some stain at this thing. Okay, YouTubes, I think we're good to go. I went ahead and glued on a bunch of little half domes I had. I put them every five inches, so I've got a little half dome glued in. I've got the uh, spikes all sanded down. I'm ready to glue those in after we stain. I got the skull glued on, E6000 for everything. And then I went ahead and backfilled a little bit on the side with uh, hot glue. I blacked out his eyes and his nose so that way when the red stain gets down in there it's a darker color so it looks deeper. So I'm going to get set up and I think we're ready to go to stain. Let's do it. Okay YouTubes, so I got the frame laid out. I got it sitting up on old paint lids. I love to use these to uh, paint something on that way uh, you don't have a rough edge where paint and stuff builds up on the edge of something. I got all the little spikes done. Uh, shave these down. I'm going to end up gluing these in the corner once this guy is dried out. So we'll have some pretty cool looking uh, spike studs in the corners of this frame. So I'm using the same stain I use at the lower half of my shop. It's the uh, Varathane Wiping Stain Cabernet. Uh, it's really cool stuff. It's like a blood red color. I want to leave this stuff on so it soaks in the most. I'll probably do one coat. I'm going to work right out, of the, uh, right out of the bucket. And I just want to brush it on and I want to leave it in place. I'm gonna get through this whole frame first and then I'm gonna wipe and see if I want it darker or not. But basically I'm just slapping it on just like you see. Get it in all those little holes and little crevices and stuff. And I'm gonna brush everything the same, frame and all. All the way down, the new pieces, the old pieces, I'm gonna hit everything. And when I come back, I'll wipe off and I'll decide if we're gonna do a, a second coat on this thing. Okay YouTube, so I went ahead and brushed out the whole frame, skull and everything, one big nice heavy wet coat like I was painting it. Uh, the other day I went ahead and painted some yellow eyes. I think I'm going to sink those back in the head up here to kind of make it stand out and I'll glue those in later on. Uh, I'm going to let this sit for a little while and I want to go ahead and start wiping it back to see what we get. That's a little bit light, I wouldn't mind going a little bit darker with the red color. So I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead, let all this stuff soak in, and when I come back, uh, I'll show you the finished frame, what it looks like. Uh, I'll have to let it dry, I'll glue in my spikes, and while I got you guys here, I'll show you the blackboard that we painted. So the magnet board's all painted, we put one coat of chassis paint on that, so that's done, that's ready to go in. So I think we're good. I'm going to let this soak, I'm going to wipe this all off. Uh, I'll go ahead and glue my little stakes on, my little uh, spikes for the corners. And then uh, I'll glue the eyes in, and we'll be ready to just about hang this thing on the wall and uh, put some magnets on this thing. Okay, YouTubes, our frame is done. It's stained. I got the eyeballs glued in. I got all the wooden spikes glued in. Last thing we got to do is put our magnet board in. We sandblasted this and put some chassis paint on it, one coat. We're ready to drop in. I'm going to go ahead and silicone this in. Uh, I'll put a couple of dabs here and there, kind of run it a little bit around. And then I'm going to throw some screws in this on the back side to go ahead and help hold this monster in. It's gonna be heavy because it's 20 gauge sheet metal. Um, and I've got two hangers on the back. Instead of using a single one, because kids are gonna be pulling magnets off this board, I don't want this thing ever coming off the wall and hurting anybody. So I've got two hangers installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and silicone this in. I'm gonna throw some screws in, and then we'll drop the panel on the back side, and we'll call this thing done. We're gonna hang on the wall, throw some magnets on it, and check it out. All right, YouTubes, here we go. I went ahead and just used some cheap dark blue spray paint on the back since we're never going to see it. 
All right, we're gonna let that guy drop in. I'm gonna go ahead and run some screws around this thing to lock it down, and then we're gonna hang it on the wall, throw our magnets on, and uh, turn the black light on, and so you can see all the magnets light up in, uh, in the dark. Okay, YouTube, this thing is done. I've got it hung up. Uh, all the magnets are on the board, we're ready to go. Let's take a look at this thing. Check it out. I'm gonna have the trick-or-treaters come in for Halloween and they're just gonna pick themselves a magnet. I got uh, some black light chalk from uh, Spirit Halloween. I wrote Choose Foolish Mortals so they can pick their own magnet. And I might have this thing down on the board closer to the floor for little kids that can reach up and take what they want. Uh, but the coolest part is this, check this out. Boom, it's all black light. So all the magnets light up, the kids can pick whatever they want. Um, I'm real super happy with it. I think it's going to be super creepy and cool for the kiddos when they come for Halloween. Uh, like I said, I'll probably have it on a little stand closer to the floor, but uh, I'm just thrilled with it. I needed something to hold up all my magnets as I'm making them. I can throw them on there. And uh, my black light ones, I've got an 80 watt black light overhead that I'm going to have shining on this and uh, for Halloween. So when the kids come in the garage to get their treat bags, they're going to get to pick a magnet off the board for Halloween. So... That's my magnetic monster board, folks. Thanks for watching and putting up with me. I'm real happy with it. I mean, all the little pieces come together, and all I got is $15 in this thing that I bought from the little old lady on uh, Facebook Marketplace. So if you guys get a chance, go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, uh, Rick Springsteen, who is changing his channel's name to Mis or Monster Misfits, and Dave at the Weird Kids Show channel. Like I said, we're going to keep going to Halloween and beyond. Uh, we're not going to stop building. Halloween is not canceled, not by a long shot. We're going full steam all the way to Halloween and then beyond. So thank you guys for watching so much. Hope you dig my board. Until I see you again, keep it evil, always. Thanks for watching.